as, as it's in your pamphlet, we are going to be in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Um, kind of feel like I, mean, I had a note in my Bible, which I've started doing because Christy keeps up with this as well. Is uh, I try to mark my Bible down when I've done something and I haven't done something. Now, I don't know whether I've done the scripture, whether it was a, a, a preaching or I did, or whether it was a Sunday school. A lesson that I did, but either way, God kind of hid it from me because I didn't even realize until I opened my Bible this morning uh, when Miss Amelia was teaching. And uh, I know a lot of the things that were prayed about today, and a lot of things that were in Sunday school, a lot of the same points are going to be made if you were here for Sunday school, and it just amazes me how God works. Amen. Um, I did want to stop and, and uh, apologize to Brianna because I didn't mean to upset you or hurt your feelings. It was just such a laughable thing to me, and that's what I was saying. Is just nobody would ever believe that, so I do apologize. So, uh, but anyway, so when I say in God we trust, yes. And uh, boy, I tell you what, we're living in a time today where I hope you're trusting God because you're not going to have any peace unless you do trust Him. But one of the what is the first thing you think about when we say in God we trust? And uh, I, I did a little bit of, of history on this. It's because it's on our currency. It's, it's on our, our coins. It's on our bills. And, um, of course, you know, it's always been on our money. But, actually, it's not always been on our money. So, the history of this is, um, it was a time back in the Civil War. As the Civil War was winding down, that the Christian leaders felt like that the disasters that had been falling on our nation because the people had disowned God. Yeah. Does that sound familiar to you today? Because people have disowned God, folks, and it's no longer in God we trust, but instead it's in, it's in you're entrusting yourself or you're entrusting other people instead of putting your trust in our Father. Right. Um, so, and that's biblical. If you forsake God, He will forsake you. That's right. Now, do you not realize that God has not really got His hand on this nation today? Because God's children turn their backs on Him, and then you've got all those that don't believe in Him, that badmouth Him, that mock Him, don't ever recognize for one second in their lives or give any praise and glory to the God in heaven. Um, now, that's not to say that God does not protect those that love Him. So just, just the opposite of God forsaking you, Proverbs 8, 17, is I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. You take a step towards God, God is going to take a step towards you. You want Him to accomplish something in your life, get off your tail end and take a step towards God. Include Him in your plan, and then God will make that step towards you to let you know if it's the right decision or not. So it works both ways. God expects us to do our part. Uh, but it, and it's really a shame as these people back in that day at the end of the Civil War, they recognized that things were going bad. They were in war all the time or they were having natural disasters happening. And they thought to themselves, you know what? We need to do something to remind the people of this great nation that in God we trust. So it was put on our currency. What's the world trying to do today? They're trying to take it off our currency. They're trying to do away with the currency. They're trying to do crypto, whatever that was called, crypto money or something. And, and so they are trying to replace God. They are trying to kick God out of our country. They're trying to take God out of our very vocabulary. I mean, I'll never forget, on, you know, we've always said Merry Christmas as, as long as I can remember. And all of a sudden, well, we don't want to offend them. They're of a different religion. So now we're going to say Happy Holidays. That's not what we're supposed to be doing as Christians. It is Merry Christmas. Amen. So they tried to take Christ out of Christmas. Well, now they're trying to take Him out of our vocabulary, take Him off our money for our one world, uh, for one world money. So they are trying to take it off of our currency. Now, let me ask you this: Do you see any wars happening today? Mm -hmm. Do you see any pestilences happen today? Do you see any famines going on today? We see each and everything that I just named and much more. And it's because it's not in God we trust for a lot of people. Those of us that love the Lord, uh, yes, we do. But this is why the things that are happening in the world, as Miss 
uh, Brenda said, talking about how, how evil this world is getting. And you know what? We, we're kind of protected, to be honest with you, because we don't see near what goes on that's actually going on in the world today, uh, being where we're at. So, 1864 was the first minted coin on a two-cent coin. And on that coin, it said, In God we trust. So it has been on our coins ever since then. 1956, Congress passed a law stating, In God we trust is the official motto of the United States. You know, in part, they wanted to put that on the coin because we've had coins all the way back to the time that we had gold. You know, and, and, and if anybody a decade from them would come across one of those coins, they wanted them to know that we were a Christian nation. That's right. And we ought to be proud of our nation, the most blessed place that God has ever blessed. That's why the communists and the socialist countries hate us. Because we have freedom and we have the hand of God in, uh, in our lives and in us. And what a blessing that is. And that we've got to step up and do our part in this nation that is growing darker and darker each and every day. And I say, well, brother, how are we going to do that? You know how to smile, don't you? You know how to say good morning when you walk into a place, don't you? I mean, even us as a fellowship in, in the body of, of Jesus Christ, when one of my brothers and sisters and I sense spiritually that something's wrong with them, I go up to them and say, hey, you okay? That's, isn't that not what we're supposed to do? Amen. Well, we're supposed to be out in the world doing that too. Uh, it's ministering unto people. Yes. Um, and... Uh, I guarantee you, there's a lot of people might not trust in God today, but there's coming a time they're going to trust and bow to each other or they're going to hell. I mean, it's just as simple as that. And I love people get upset when I say, well, brother, you're just teaching hate. No, I'm not. I'm stating a fact. You don't follow God and accept His Son as your Lord and Savior, you're going to hell. That's right. Plain and simple. It's black and white. A little bit of red. Mm -hmm. yes. A little bit of gray, too, according to a lot of people. But God's will is God's will, and God's will is in this Bible. Amen. So that's, that's about the title of this, is In God We Trust. So today we're going to look at uh, what God's Word says about In God We Trust. Alright? If you don't trust in God, what do you trust in? Now I don't know about y'all, but I mean, there's been many, many times that people have let me down in my life. How about you? There's so many times I put my trust in somebody else doing the right thing because I do the right thing and I was let down. I mean, we're not supposed to put our trust in people. We're supposed to put our trust in God. Amen. And a lot of people say, well, I'm going to put my trust in myself. Some might say, well, I'm going to put my trust in my preacher. I've never once asked you to put your trust in me, ever. I've always told you you need to put your trust in the God of the universe. I'm nothing but an empty vessel that He uses. But what we're supposed to be, God and God we trust. Um, now there's nothing wrong with being self-confident, but not puffed up, not arrogant. Carry yourself with confidence. Do you know why did you carry yourself with confidence? Because you know God. And you love God. And you trust God with your families and your lives today. Um, but the, the bad thing is we are bad to when things go bad, what do we blame? We blame God. Oh, God, why did you do this to me? Oh, man, I tell you what, you're making one of the worst mistakes that you could ever make by ever blaming God for something that's wrong in your life. But now when we do something good, we want to stand back and say, man, look what I did. Look what I did. Instead of giving God the praise and the glory. I'm everything that I am and I'm everything that I have because my trust is in God. It's got nothing to do with me. It is the abilities that He has given me to do what I do. So I give Him all the praise and the glory for that. Alright, so now we're going to see what the Word says about uh, in God we trust. So we are in chapter, second epistle of Corinthians chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. Alright, i got to turn this down. It's blowing my pages. Let me try that again. Alright. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, Amen. and Timothy, our brother, unto the church of God, which is in Corinth, with all the saints which are all in Archaea. Did it say it, what Paul's will was? Nope. Did it say what Brother Randall's will was? Nope. No, it said the will of God. 
And I'm going to tell you something, there's a big difference in somebody that's been called to do this before the foundation of the world, and Paul was one of them. And it was the will of God that was going to be done through him. Amen. Not man's will. Not our government's will. Okay? It's God's will. And that's what you ought to pray about your own personal lives each and every time you pray. God, if it be your will Amen. that I do this, if it be your will that I get married or that I move to a different state or that I change jobs, always pray for God's will to be done in your life and your life to be so much better. Because if it ain't God's will, you don't want it. Amen. <clears throat> but that's one of those things. Again, we're trying to do stuff on our own instead of including God in our, in our prayers. Um, we've got to include God in our decision making. <clears throat> and I guarantee you, you'll have a lot better luck with your decision making if you do that. I can't help uh, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, which is the tattoo that I've got on my, on my arm. Trust in the Lord. Always trust in the Lord. And it always says, always do His will. Okay? Always trust in Him and do His will. Don't go on your own will. <clears throat> Alright, verse 2. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you have any peace in your life today? Now when Jesus Christ descended into heaven, He sent back the, the Comforter Amen. that gives us the peace that we have each and every day. Now I want to ask you something. Can you imagine living this life today and not having the peace and the hope of a future with everything that's going on. Man, I could not imagine that. Or is Satan having his way in your life today? You know, it takes a whole lot of storms sometimes to wake somebody up and recognize that God is in control and they're in the midst of that storm and they forget that fact. Have you ever had a time in your life where everything that you touch would go wrong? Each and every day, just chaos in your life. But guess what? When you love God, you've got the peace of God to know that He is going to be on the other side of that with you bigger, better, and stronger when we do those things. The thing about Satan having his way, why would you do that? Why would you let Satan have his way in your life? You know that Jesus Christ gave us power over Him through the name of Jesus Christ. I didn't say you had the power over Him for yourself. You have the power over Him through the name of Jesus Christ. Alright, verse 3. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comforts. There you have the Godhead listed. God, the Son, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. Do you ever bless God? Did you know that we can bless God? Do you not know that that makes His day? Instead of you focusing on you and you focusing on all your problems, that you actually bless the God of the universe? He likes that. Always give Him all the praise and the glory and always bless Him. Verse 4, Who comforted us in all tribulation. Did it say part of our tribulation? It says He comforts us through all of our tribulations. He's not just going to pick and choose. That's a promise from God. But again, in God we trust. Do you trust Him to do that for you? That we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Amen. This is one of the, the, the a verses that you just need to remember so much, folks. Because what this verse is saying, you've got salvation. You've got eternal life. You've got the peace of hope within you because Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit of God, dwells within you. So he's saying when you walk out those doors, you take it home with you. You take it to your workplace. You take it on the road. See, we've got that peace. But how many people are lost in the world today? Amen. When's the last time you invited somebody to church? When's the last time you talked to somebody about Jesus Christ? When is the last time that you witnessed to somebody? When is the last time that you comforted somebody? See, because we've got the victory. 
And we should take that outside these doors and be a beacon of light to those that are lost in the world today. I had an experience at Lowe's. There's a, a young lady that works back in the floor department and she often um, helps me. And she's always got a smile on her face. She pretty much knows her business. You know, again, we've got that comfort. And if you've got the spiritual discernment, you can tell that something is wrong with somebody. And I could tell something was wrong with her. And I went up to her and I said, I said, are you, are you doing okay? I said, you're normally smiling, this, that, and the other. She said, well, my world's falling apart. How many people do you reckon is hurting in the world today? Come on now. We, we hurt, we hurt, and we love God. You know, we go through those trials and tribulations, but they don't have that. Um, she'd already had back surgery, and now she was looking at neck surgery, which she was going to not be able to work for four or five months. She's going through a, a nasty divorce. Um, and there's one thing, and I forgot. But anyway, that's that, those two right there is enough to do somebody in. Lost their job, lost, or they're going to lose their job, lost their marriage, and going to have to have a neck surgery. And I said, well, I'd like to pray for you. Um, I said, now, if it makes you uncomfortable, because I've been there before, before I'm where I'm at right now, don't, I don't care if somebody prays over me, wherever. You know, right downtown, Nashville, or whatever. But used to, that would bother me. So I was trying to be considerate. I said, would you like me to pray for you? She said, yes. I said, all right. I said, you, you know, if you're too embarrassed to do it, you don't have to. And we prayed right there in the store. Folks, we have the comfort. And we have got to also spread that comfort and that comforter to other people. It is God expects it. He really does. He expects us to bear fruit when we are out in the world. Do you think that makes a difference in the darkness that's going on today? One act of kindness can change one person to come into a relationship with God and join the battle that we are in today. The spiritual battle. One more soldier for God's army. One soul saved. And every time we save a soul, the angels of heaven are celebrating and singing and praising God. One soul. There's not a person sitting in a pew today in here that you don't have enough talent to get somebody in or around or nearby Jesus Christ. Amen. Simply by giving them uh, an invite. And I can't help but think of old Peter. Look, he was in the boat. You know? And, and Christ was walking across the waters and there was a great tempest, a great storm going on. And Jesus says, Come to me. He steps out of the boat. Boy, I'd love that. Can you imagine that walking on water? You think it'd work right now for me? So he steps out of the boat and he starts to walk towards Christ. Now what happened to him? He was in the middle of the storm, which would be your trial and your tribulation today. He took his eyes off of Christ and he signed it. But Christ still saved him. When we're in the midst of the storm, we've got to keep our eyes on Jesus Christ. Verse 5, For as the suffering of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth in Christ. Christ suffered for us. And He left us that comforter so that we could be comforted during our trials and tribulations. So who was His comforter when He went to that cross? God. The Holy Spirit of God. He knew that He was going to conquer death and die for our sins. Verse 6, And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation which is effectual in enduring the same sufferings which also which we also suffer, or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. Effectual means to make active. And I can't help to think of the verse, James chapter 1, verse 2, that we are to take joy in all of our trials and tribulations. Amen. Now, when you tell some people that, well, you're going through a divorce right now, you ought to be happy. You know, <laughs> the thing is, when you've got a really good relationship with God, you know that He's got something better lined up for you. You know that no matter what happens, you are coming out the other side of that trial and tribulation. Some people will claim about being conflicted. Did you know that uh, the people in Russia, if they want to baptize somebody in water, that they have to sneak out in the wee hours of the morning under darkness and cut 
a two foot, the ice is two foot deep and they have to cut a hole literally to baptize somebody. And we want to complain about our afflictions and things we go through today. What about China? They can actually lose their lives for doing it. That's going to come. It might come to that day for us too. Amen. But we have got to stay focused and keep our eyes on Jesus Christ. And any time that you teach the Word of God or the truth of God or witness, you are going to be afflicted. Just like Jesus Christ was afflicted for bringing forth that Word. The more we suffer for Christ, the more we will be afflicted. But guess what? We can handle it. Because he, we've got Him with us. Alright, verse 7. And our hope of you is steadfast. And man, we were living in a time we've got to hold and be steadfast. Continue to praise and worship God. Continue to trust in Him. Knowing that as you are partakers of the suffering, so shall also... Uh, of thee the consolation. God knows what our limits are. Now, I've been in some pretty bad situations in my life that I never dreamed that could have been turned around. And, and, and I was on the wrong path. And I tell you what, God turned that around. I, I give Him all the praise and the glory and the credit for that. Um, but a verse every Christian should know would be 1 Corinthians 10, 13. And it says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, yes. who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will also make a way for you to escape so that you can bear it. That's right. I mean, do you understand that verse? God will never let more be put on you than you can handle. Amen. He will never do that to you. And if it gets too hard for you, he will show you the way out. You know why? Because the truth will set you free. It will show you the way out so that you can bear the tribulation that you're going through in your life. You need to memorize that verse. Anytime you're going through things and you think it's so bad you just can't get up and face another day. Do you ever get up feeling that way? Tired of doing it? Don't want to do it? But God will never place more on you than you can handle. Hebrews 13, 5, He says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. How many promises are in this Word that tells you if you meet the conditions set forth in this Bible that you will have the victory. He will show you the way out of anything that you go through in this lifetime. If you in God we trust. Man, I don't want to trust in myself. I don't want to trust in our government. I don't want to trust in anybody but God. Amen. Verse 8. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were passed, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired. Paul was saying, we thought we were going to die. Now, I'm not going to go there. I, I, I was trying to make up my mind to go to Acts or not, but I'm not going there. But these people, the silversmiths in that town, were making silver little statues, little idols, and people were buying them like you would not believe. A little statue. Now, can you imagine worse than that? But they did. So guess what? Paul went in and he started teaching the truth of God's Word. He was hurting their business. Why did they crucify Christ? He was hurting their business. What were they putting their trust in? Well, the, the guys that were selling this mess were putting their trust in the riches that they have here instead of in heaven. And those that were buying the idols that were supposed to be in church learning about God, they chose to worship a little statue. So I don't see no one God we trust in that, do you? You know, those times are coming again. He was afraid for his life. And they, they were afraid for their life often. Now, as we always say, everything that happened in the past is going to come and happen again. It will come a time when we will be in danger for our lives, those that are spreading God's Word and teaching. Right. Alright, so I'm going to skip the Acts.
Verse 9. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the dead. In God we trust. It's okay to have confidence in yourself. But don't trust yourself with your soul with anybody else. In God we trust. We make a lot of bad decisions based on our emotions. I've heard that bring up a couple of times this morning during church. You know, the, the heart is very deceitful. And a lot of times we make some really bad decisions based on our emotions instead of trusting in God. And we cannot trust our feelings. Verse 10. Who delivered us from so a great death and doth deliver in whom we trust that He will yet deliver us. Hebrews 2.14 For as much as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, He also Himself likewise took part of the same, that through death He might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. Jesus Christ died on that cross so that we actually never die. Do you understand me? Amen. All we do is pass from this flesh body to the eternity. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Hallelujah. Can I get an amen? amen. Everyone please bow your head.